If you need to get up and running with Planner Premium quickly, you're in the right place. Because I know many of you have checked out Planner Premium and put your credit card details in to get it up and running, only to find that when it comes to creating your first plan, you get totally lost in all of the capabilities. Well, not to worry, because I've been there as well. Many years ago, before I started Your365 Coach, I was helping by managing IT projects, but I didn't have Microsoft Project installed, and I knew that by getting project, I'd be a much better project manager. So after much chasing and getting the sign off to go and get project installed on my computer, I quickly found out I had no idea how to use project. Within six months, I also had it uninstalled from my computer because I simply didn't use it. That wasn't because project wasn't any good, it's just because I had nowhere to learn the skills and how to use project in the best possible way. Well, at least not with spending a lot of money. So with that in mind, this tutorial is gonna show you how to get started planner premium quickly, creating a plan, assigning tasks, creating subtasks, using timelines, sprint planning, and more. So you can go and get started with planner premium and not have it removed from your computer in six months time. Now, of course, before we get started, if you wanna learn how to use these tools in much better ways, such as Copilot, Team, SharePoint, and more, hit the subscribe button. You'll find more great content like this every single week. Otherwise, hit that like button to let me know this video has helped you, and let's dive into Planner Premium while you and me get started creating our first project together. So welcome to Planner Premium. If you're wondering how we got here in the first place, well, all we need to do is access the Planner app inside of Microsoft Teams. All we need to do to do that is click on the free dot menu on the left hand side and search for the word planner. You can see it's on my screen here and if I left click it takes me straight into the planner app where you can now go and create your new Microsoft planner plan. I also have access to a planner premium license. That's important because that gives us the premium capabilities. So all we then need to do to get started with one of your plans is go ahead and ensure you've selected my plans. On the right, you'll see a button that you can also select new plan. By left clicking, you'll see we now have availability to create a new premium plan. But by clicking that button, it doesn't take us to the right place because that will create a brand new plan from scratch. In other words, it's completely blank. That may work for you, but in today's video, I need to get some tasks quickly. So instead, we can use a planner premium template that Microsoft has already published for us all to use. To access your Planner Premium templates, select any of the templates that you have here shown as icons. If I want to have a look at a commercial construction, you can see that this is only available as a Planner Premium template, indicated by the diamond icon. As I have accessed the Planner Premium, I could go ahead and use this template by selecting that button here. We now need to give a plan a name and also we can pin it to my pin plans. Commercial construction is great, but it's not very specific. Let's update that plan name. With that done, let's also consider security. We can easily add it to any of our existing groups or teams, meaning the security can be shared with that group or team. All the members of the team or group will see your plan, as well as having the ability to have tasks assigned in your plan. But in many cases, you won't want your plan to be shared until it's ready to go. So I'm not gonna go and select that. By having no input here into add as a group, this plan will be created privately, meaning only I have access to it. Let's go ahead and click on create, and I'll show you how to share it with others a little later. And welcome to your new plan. You can see here we have over 144 tasks. They're all from our template created using Planner Premium both high-level tasks and subtasks are nicely grouped together in this way. But how can you go and create a new task and also subtask? Well, there's a quick way of doing it. You could absolutely click on add new task, but the problem here is it appears right at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and put architecture design and click enter. You'll now see that task 145 is right at the bottom. That's not gonna help us, right? All we need to do then is we can left click and we can drag our task right to the top so it appears one of our first tasks in the plan. All you have to do is left click and drag and begin taking it to the top 
of our plan. With the magic of video editing, we can now see architecture design is sitting here, but it has no subtasks. How can we fix that? Well, all we need to do is we can right click on the task beneath it, and this time select insert task above. Yes, you won't need to drag and drop this all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and add in our task name. But as you can see, this task is not a subtask. I want task number 10 to become a subtask of task number nine. So all we then need to do is click on the free dot menu in task 10 and we can make a subtask. We need architecture design becomes our high level task and we can create subtasks beneath that that then fall in line, showing this ability to group them inside of our plan. We can also make changes by clicking on the eye icon on the right hand side, you see a task window allowing you to make changes to the start date, assignment and more. But creating these subtasks are great, but also our project needs sprints and the only one I can see is backlog. Well, we can have that also change in our plan. If you need to work with sprints, all we need to do is go over and select board. Now you'll see it groups it by buckets. That's the old way of working in planner. This time, let's select group by and select sprint. And now we see the option to add a sprint. Left click, give it a name, a start and an end date. With that done, hit on the add sprint button and we now see sprint zero. With that input, we can go back to our grid view and we can now go and change the relevant sprint. We can do that in two ways. Click on the eye icon, on the right hand side, change the sprint to sprint zero and that task will now have association to a sprint. But if you like using grids like Excel, go ahead and select add column and then select sprint. You'll now see this in sprint zero and I could open other tasks in our plan and also change them to sprint zero through the grid view. If you're enjoying on how to use Microsoft Planner Premium in the best ways, then you'll love our on-demand masterclass because Planner Premium is just one way that you can manage tasks. So if you want to understand how you can use Microsoft Lists, Microsoft Loop, Microsoft To Do, Planner Basic, or even more on Planner Premium, then why not check out our on-demand masterclass, which you can find more about in the link below. We'll give you the skills you need to improve how you manage tasks every day in Microsoft 365. And of course, if you also want to learn more, you can even find a free ebook on the website you can download. Otherwise, let's head back into Planner Premium and get you learning new skills that you can use today. But sprints and plans come with goals. I need to ensure that our architect drawings are all completed. That's a pretty important goal of our plan, one of many goals we need to achieve. But how can I track that in Planner Premium? Well, let's go ahead and select Goals, and then select Add Goal, and let's give our goal a name. With our goal now, now updated, let's go ahead and select an end date of when I expect this goal to be achieved by. We'll put it to the end of the month. We can also state the status and we can mark it as being on track. With that done, you'll see a new option appears to add a new task. And that is literally adding a brand new task to our plan. I don't want to do that because I already have some tasks that I need to achieve to meet this goal. So instead, select connect tasks on the right hand side. And now I can add in the task we use for range architects. We can now see it's been connected to our goal. Once again, in our grid view, if we want to at a glance, a grid to be able to review, we go to add column, select goal, we can now see it's in the relevant goal. Once again, we can left click in any of your tasks and choose an existing goal. It will also map up to the goals, allowing you to track against its progress and the relevant dates and keep an eye on it to ensure that you achieve your project goals. But what about custom metadata? Really important in any plan because planners previously, the basic version, didn't give you any ability to create custom fields. But in Planner Premium, you can do exactly that. On the right hand side here, I want to track a rag status, red, amber, green, of all of my tasks as they get progressed. The problem is there isn't one in Planner Premium, or not least in this plan. So let's go ahead and select Add Column and choose New Field, allowing me to select from a choice value and then choose the field name and the relevant choices. With my choices added, all I need to do is click into the color picker and I can also denote colors of my choice to align to the colors that I'm using inside of my choice values. 
click create and we now see a rag column that's been added into my grid view. Left click and we can also set the relevant tasks into the green rag color. We even have the ability to click on the eye icon in any of your tasks to see the new field that you've created for the rag score that can also be updated in place. So creating new fields and metadata in your plan is as easy as left clicking and creating your own fields. But I have a problem with my plan. I want to share it with others and also assign tasks to them. The problem is this is a shared plan. This is denoted by the padlock icon on the right hand side. You may remember we set this so we can get our plan up and running before it's seen by anyone else. I don't want anyone criticizing my new plan. Well now I'm ready to share it. So all we need to do is click on the share button. You'll see we can invite members either by creating a new Microsoft 365 group or adding it to an existing one that already exists that you have access to. But let's go ahead and create a new one and I can add in the members to my plan. Matthew's helping me get this project sorted. Let's go ahead and add Matthew's name. Nestor is also helping me. Select Nestor's name. With that done, select create group and you'll now see it creates a brand new group, allowing me to now assign tasks to others inside of our plan. All we need to do is left click into the task and I can assign tasks to me, Matthew and Nestor. With visibility across the plan, and tasks now being assigned that they can see in their own Planner app. Yes, any tasks that you now assign to others in Planner Premium will also appear in the My Tasks view that they have in their own version of Planner. We can actually see that that one task I assigned to myself is showing correctly in My Tasks in Planner Premium that I can pick up and update in place. But what about your timeline view? Everyone needs a good timeline to run a good project. And while Planner Premium comes with one here, select Timeline and you can see it straight on the screen. But you'll also see it has dependencies. The great news in Planner is we can left click and open the task details and readjust the end dates. You'll now see when a readjustment of this task here that will update the plan in place. All of the tasks that are dependent on this will also be automatically adjusted on your timeline view. That's very easy to see here, but you can also even move the task forward. Here, I pushed it forward. We can now see these tasks here will also readjust based upon those end dates, allowing you to make changes in the timeline that will also dynamically be shown in your timeline view. Not only that, even in here, we can see who has tasks allocated through the timeline and even add new task assignment to others without going anywhere near our grid view. It's very powerful to use. But that takes us into our reporting. The timeline is great, but I want to filter it by a particular sprint. Is that possible? Absolutely is. Click on filters to the right, and you can see we have sprint zero. I can now see sprint zero. Yes, it's not showing the dates here until I scroll across. But you can now see that the sprint can also show any dates of tasks and dependencies for a view of that particular sprint. You won't need to look at it through the whole view of your project plan. Once again, if I choose the backlog sprint, we can see here that we have more available to us to see inside of our plan, but it's only visible for that particular sprint. But reporting doesn't end there. Click on charts and you'll also see that when we selected the sprint for backlog, it actually applied it to the charts tab that means when you filter data in Planner Premium, it appears like that in multiple tabs. You can update the sprints and you can see that this updates our report straight in place. You can even set the dates progress and even better, have a look at those custom fields. Here I can check out any RAG status is green for the relevant tasks and we can see it's been filtered into here as well. So using custom fields, you can also report on them both through the timeline and charts in Planner Premium. So we've created our project together and I hope that you now know how to get started with Planner Premium. So you can get started with creating that plan, managing your tasks, sharing it, creating sprints and more. And I do hope this means that you won't have it removed from your account in six months time because you simply didn't know how it worked. Now, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button to let me know we even drop a message in the comments below. Those comments always help with 
motivating us to make more great content every single week. And if you want to keep up with these videos, hit that subscribe button to find new content and how you can use the tools you already have in much better ways. Otherwise, well, as you know, I'll be seeing you in the next one.